The Newfoundland and Labrador Skidoo and Can-Am dealers present Adventures Unknown. Well, I'm just leaving Steady Brook. What an epic adventure, caving and mountain biking. Loved it. And now I'm on my way to Grosmoor National Park, which is really cool, really excited. So here we go. Pedal to the metal, let's go. I mean, look at that. It's like world class. It's a privilege to be here. I'm gonna pull over somewhere now and just like relax and meditate and, and take it all in. Hey guys! Oh, Hello! How are you? Good! Alex? Yes, sir. Nice to meet you. Yeah, Becky. Hey, nice Becky, to nice meet, to meet you. you. What a spot you have here. Oh, thank Thanks. You. I'm so glad to be here and uh, going on an adventure, I guess. Uh, we got a big day planned. Cool. What's on the go? What's the plan? We're going to head out on Bond Bay and have a look around here at some of the uh, resettled communities. After that, we're going to uh, head up to the eco cabins. Okay, cool. Get you off grid. Wow, that'll be yeah, fun. Yeah, we'll right. hopefully we'll have a little stop in the fishing shed too, maybe a bite to eat. There you go, <laughs> Jimmy, come on. She'll come, come on. along on, yeah, on some of our adventures today oh, too. Okay, cool. Yeah, it'd be great to have something to eat in there. That's like totally old school Newfoundland. Yeah. This is brilliant out here. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's a pretty peaceful spot. You're very lucky to be living out here. We think so. As if Gross Morn wasn't magical enough, a school of dolphins show up. A cooler jumping right out of the water.
I didn't expect to see dolphins in Gross Horn. That was pretty cool. You don't know what you're going to see. Any t every turn in the road, you don't know what to expect. They're really playful creatures, yeah. aren't they, hey? Just putting on a show. Yeah. You can tell that they're, they're just putting on a show for you. Yeah. What a time so far. This is such a beautiful place. It's like you get that feeling of all, like old Newfoundland being at your nan's house or cabin. And yeah. It doesn't matter what it is, tea or coffee outside, it's, it's 100 times better. Yeah. When you're enjoying it in a spot like this. Newfoundland, it's like our staple, isn't it? Tea. You know? Mm -hmm. you know? There you go. Puppy's tea. <laughs> yeah. Cheers to you. And you as well. There you go. And you too, Alex. Yes. Got the boat tied up. <laughs> oh my, that's nice tea. My God, it's so cozy in here, isn't it? It's beautiful. Just it. And what it'd be like now to be, you know, coming off the sea all damp and after fishing and having a having a mug up a tea now with your family, or you know what I mean? Yeah, froze like, a bit. <laughs> froze a bit. Yeah. Up. Just a little chance to get a little warm up and a little break. Yeah. And back on the water. Yeah, that's just it. Not an easy life at all. No. And that's what I think about. Like as I'm here in the daytime, sometimes I'm thinking about like what would it have been like? You know, it's, it's tough fishing yeah. now, but imagine 50 years ago. Yeah. You know, it's... And they they were rowing out to the Grand Banks, yeah. right? I wouldn't go out there in a you know in a <laughs> yeah. fishing trawler, right? Yeah. Or a cruise Not boat. Sure. I wouldn't go out there in a cruise and they're rowing. Tell you. Out. Rough. Not easy. No. But that's just it. I mean, you imagine a little fishing shed like this just dotting the coast and the comfort that you'd find, you know, just in a rough little spot like this. Yeah. But it would be, it'd be a lot of comfort. I could just see here now Nan, you know, on the propane stove and Skipper mm -hmm. out there, you know, you know, bringing in his boat and, you know, mm -hmm. her being uh, just thankful that he's safe and they're, yeah. you know, that's and right. they're back safe for another night together, right? Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know what I'm getting on with, but you can feel it though, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, Nan no, here and Skip right. here, family. No, and that's absolutely right. Hey, everybody, make sure to follow our adventures on social media. My famous muscle pizza. Oh, wow. Here you go, Donnie. Cool, oh, man. Yeah. And here's your moose slaughters. Oh, my God. Beautiful. Wow. Let's take a picture of that. Yeah. And here you go. Order up. Yes, go for it. Yes, hands on it, family style. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Here's my sample of the muscle pizza. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, my God. Mmm. That is really good. Yeah. The flavors come together really awesome, hey? With the honey, it just gives it a little sweetness. Mm -hmm. And with the cheese and the, I mean, it really works out really. This is like award-winning pizza. Mm -hmm. Good job on this, boss. Yep. Now on to the burgers. There you go. What? Mr. Moose Burger. There you go. OK. Let's see. Here it goes. Mmm. Yeah, that's delicious. Moose sliders. Mm hmm. Oh. I'm going to remember this now for the rest of my <laughs> life. You know what they say? What's that? Have a doubt or go without. <laughs> I'm going to put uh, molasses on this side, rhubarb on this side, blueberry on this side, and partridge berry on this side. There you go. Dip it in. Yeah. That was a great meal. I had three moose burgers, and I had three pieces of pizza, and four towns. 
and we're gonna have to roll you out of here. And two cups of tea. <laughs> That's a lot though, isn't it? No it is. Okay, we're here now in the quad. Wild and crazy ride. We're going to the eco cabin and we're gonna check out the sinkhole. Do some climbing. Lots of fun here. Okay, we're at the sinkhole. We're gonna go down some ropes, down to the bottom of the sinkhole, big old waterfalls, bashing on some rocks. It's pretty cool. And uh, what do we do, any advice, sir? Uh, the only advice I got for you, Donnie boy, is you gotta have your three points of contact. You gotta watch out for any rocks that might be falling overhead, and just watch out for the mud that you don't slip, and the waterfall is the main thing. Watch All out right. for the waterfall. Okay, cool. Now what we'll do first though, you wait until I get down a little bit, right? that way I'll give you the signal to come down. All right. Kind of looks dangerous for a klutz like me. Whoa, Daddy, watch it. Whoa. Whoa! You all right? Yep. Whoa, okay, easy, Donnie. And the rock slides some up. Oh yeah, watch your footing. Okay, we made it down to the bottom of the sinkhole. It's really cool. The waterfalls is pounding on this rock here. You can feel all the spray. It's like being in another land. You almost got uh, hit by a slider, sorry about that. I almost got a rock in the head. Yeah. Well, that's okay, Donnie. It? But it's beautiful down here. We're down on the bottom, in the belly of the dragon. It's crazy down here. This waterfall is pounding. It's so loud. It's amazing. Nature is amazing. <laughs> this whole sinkhole used to be a cave. Right then eventually, more water and water, like what you see coming down here, it just went, like it just went and ate away all the rocks here, and then eventually the roots just came down and collapsed. Right. Uh, so what you see all around here, most of these big rocks, that is all the old roots of what used to be yeah. the case. Cool spot, man. Yeah, deadly spot, man. I appreciate you coming down. Yeah, thanks for having me. Adrenaline rushing going down there was really skitzy because all the rocks were kind of, the ground was getting loose underneath my foot and sending boulders down your way, so it was pretty scary. And then going down there and hearing the falls and being really down there underneath it was really incredible. And the thundering and it was like sensory overload. And it was when like, you slipped down those rocks, I thought you were gone. Yeah, exactly, so I'm lucky. And you were saying that that used to be a cave. Yep. This whole thing, Donna, used to be a really, really deep cave. And that's scary to me because my last adventure was in a cave for two hours, so what would have happened if that cave I was in had a collapse? Do you know what I mean? Oh, oh, oh yeah, like you would have been down underneath the rocks. Yeah, I'm lucky to be here. Oh, yeah. Dodge that bullet. For sure. Okay. How about the lights? How do you turn on the lights, the main? Oh, there is no lights. But there is no lights? So I'm here at the cabin. 
I can hear Alex, he's just about gone. It's pretty quiet here. There's no lights though. I only got like a couple of candles and five packs of matches, so I should be okay. Don't know really what I'm gonna be doing here now, but some beautiful. Well, at least I had a dog here that's for company. Living off the grid's not that bad. Is it? What do you usually do when you're down here? Drink dirty water. Look, they left me soup and bread. But it's a little too early to be eating, and then I wouldn't have anything to do, so maybe I'll go for a walk. Yeah. Wanna fetch her up? To be or not to be? To be living off the grid and be a hermit or to be living on the grid and damage and wreck the planet? Yeah. I don't know, but there's nothing to do. Kind of bird book. <clears throat> yeah, so I'll just learn about birds, I suppose. And when I finish from this trip, I'll know everything about every different bird in the world. <laughs> hey, there's binoculars over there, actually. <laughs> Maybe I will go bird watching. I'm looking for a great blackened gull. <laughs> I'm looking for a woodpecker now. Nope. And I looked into the sun. Uh, I'm a bird watcher now. Tick that off the list. Maybe I'll go for a kayak or a canoe. The middle of nowhere is exactly where I hoped my journey would lead. And here I am, in a canoe, in a pond, in the middle of nowhere. I've arrived. I feel like my journey has changed me. I have a new, profound love of the great outdoors. I'm actually kind of liking this place now. No one here telling me what to do. Just me and the dog and my wood and my fire. I'm here heating up my bun on the oven. I think this is like the leftover Towton dough we had, but. Oh, it's really good. This. Adventures Unknown would like to thank the Skidoo and Can-Am dealers of Newfoundland and Labrador for their generous support. Jimmy, you're a great company. So we survived the night, and it wasn't that bad. I really enjoyed it after I got a hang of the chainsaw and I went for a canoe ride and did some bird watching and kept the fire going, so it was really nice and cozy. So now we're off to my next adventure, which we'll check social media. Hey, Danny, me and the boss are following your adventure this whole time. We'd like you to come up to Labrador here to rip some sled with me and the boss. I'll show you how to get it done. Show you how to hit some jumps and uh, let's get her done, boys. Got it, up, <laughs> So, Jimmy, I'm going to Labrador next. Well, <laughs> do you know how to get out of here? Show me how to get out of here. Come on. There was one last thing I had to do. The Tableland Mountains were calling me.
This is amazing. I got some more steeps to climb, but I'm up for the challenge. This is like being on a different planet. It's huge. It's unbelievable the scale of this place. So this is the Earth's mantle. So there's the core of the Earth, and then the mantle around it, and then the crust. So the mantle bursted through the Earth, and then you got this rare site, one of the wonders of the world, and it's here in Grossmore National Park, Newfoundland and Labrador. This is amazing. There's no words for it. You gotta experience it yourself. You gotta come up here and hike this up. It's uh, definitely a bucket list. Wow. What else can you say about Gross Morn? Just wow. I'm just gonna chill out here now and uh, do some meditation and. Uh, praise the table land gods. I'm really grateful to be on this journey, man. Hey everyone, it's Donnie from Big Jib Productions. If you would like to go on one of these exciting adventures around Newfoundland and Labrador, visit us on adventuresunknown.ca. a fisherman. I fished all my life up to a 60 year old. And well, when I retired from fishing, I, I, I got the ground put there eh, by a truck, made work for myself. I like that, that out around doing things. Eh? Get out the house. And, like I say, I don't be in the house very much to me dinner and supper. You have to go while you can. I'll go on, onion, uh, beets, carrot, lettuce, and cucumber. We well, keep them over in the cellar, we call it, root cellar. It's better to have it in a root cellar, it's cool, eh? Down in the ground. Cool. I knew about that all my life. My grandfather had one, my father had one. Well, first of all, I poured floor in with concrete, eh? Then I uh, got some, well, second-hand building blocks, those you do your basement with, or, and I put them around. Then I went and cut some logs and went to a sawmill, got it sawed, and put the house on top. That's about 15 years ago. My father had his down under the house, eh? Because he had never had need a basement. My house, our house, was built on a lot of big rocks. That's the only place they'd build back then, because they want, they want their uh, gardens for hay. See, they had a lot of, they had cows, they had sheep, they had horses. So the worst piece of land they had to build a house on, it. like rocky land. I think it keeps the, the the food better. I can remember when they used to go moose hunting they back, well I was only probably four or five year old. They would you wait in the fall around Christmas or before when you get the cold weather and they'd get their moose and they'd hang their quarter meat out in their shed and it wouldn't be frozen in the fridge, be naturally froze, better meat. No, they won't freeze in the roots, all right? That's insulating down the ground, it's warm down in the ground. 
You can feel the heat when it goes over to take the cover off to go down and get the vegetables. You can feel the heat coming up in your face. Potatoes and the onion. Well, I I picked the little seeds at Carnes. I picked it because I only got one row there, right? So that's gone before the season is up. Apples, you bag the apples and put them over. And carrots. Only thing down the cellar, the potatoes. If you leave them through the summer, they grow the what they call the the root stocks because it's warm down there. See, it gets warm. It's not well, I don't it gets warm enough for it to grow, but it's cooler down there than it's up here. But it gets warm enough that uh, they start to grow their that's their seed, eh? Everybody there back in before my times. Everybody was a gardener and a fisherman. They used to fish and do gardens. That was what they called the good days. to you by Rogers Anyplace TV. Enjoy exclusive content for free. Visit RogersAnyplaceTV.com. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. Okay, so what's the emergency? Mondays, we're famous. Corner Gas Animated is here. Isn't it awesome? With all new episodes. Ow! Featuring special guests, including Lance Storm and Brett the Hitman Hart. I promised the judge I wouldn't body slam any more old ladies. Corner Gas Animated, all new, Mondays on CTV Comedy Channel. There are soldiers in my family. I first joined the Legion to honor their service. Now I volunteer there to be of service myself. I know my 